All right, we're here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin. We are gonna look at the bottom tray. If you remember two weeks ago, we put in a tray that was just cardboard so that the drippings would drip down instead of building it from the top. So we're just gonna kind of take a look at that real quick and see what is going on there. Wow, it is very cavernous. There's some castings there, but let's see if we find any worms in here. There, oh, one right away. A red wiggler right there but we're also gonna look at the previous feeding and in the last video we had some leftovers like a apple core I don't expect there to be too many worms but there will probably be some now we filled this cardboard up to probably right about here and it has shrunken down but don't expect yeah. to see a lot of worms in here because we haven't fed down here this is just to kind of season this bin before it goes on top and I expect it to be on top in another week or two but I think I'm going to have to put more cardboard in when we make this the top tray and I'll remember that for next time if I decide to keep doing this which is really overloaded and there's that worm again big old chunky fat guy but I'll remember for next time that we need to put a lot more cardboard in here than we think but I like it it's wet it's definitely getting seasoning from the top and there's some little ones down here, a really little one and then another medium sized one. So let's just put this back together and then we'll get on with the regularly scheduled program of feeding our top tray. All right, so now we are rebuilding the tower here. We've got that in and we'll take the lid off. And here we go. So as you can see, I put more newspaper in because last time they really demolished it. But let's get into this feeding. Now last time we said there was, we were at 50-50 castings and look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, we said we were at 50-50 castings to bedding ratio. And you know, I always put in a few more, so you'll see some of that, but this looks like a peel of some sort, but they are all in this feeding zone. This is great. This is a big chunky red wiggler. I can tell because the clitellum is a little bulging. This one right here is a blue worm. It's thinner. They're about the same length, but you can definitely tell the difference between the two when you know you have those two in here. One of the things I do like to do is if there's some food left over is spread it out since we fed in the middle. We can bring the edges over, but even the edges have lots of worms in there. Look at that. They are really working this system. And I'm so excited I have three trays on here, but really there was hardly any in that bottom tray, that one that's gonna become the top when we're ready to start breaking it down and, and feeding. But just look at that. Every handful just has tens of, you know, even a tiny handful has like tens of worms in it. I'm sure if I just grabbed a huge handful right in the feeding zone, there'd probably be a, at least a hundred. <laughs> look, look at all of this. Hopefully there's good contrast that you can see. This is looking really good. I would say, you know, we're just a couple feedings away from making this the middle tray and putting a new tray on top because they're working this and, and they can continue to work it while it's beneath the active feeding tray. This right now is the active feeding tray, but not for long. Let's keep going in here. It feels mushy. Oh, <laughs> look at that. All right, this, this is crying for a time lapse. Let's do a time lapse. you believe that there is just so many worms in this system and especially this upper tray wow wow all right we have <laughs> this i mean look at this this is what you want to see these this many worms they will break down any kind of food that's in there and this is a top of a banana stem it feels really mushy Sometimes the babies like to hide in there. It's funny, I get excited about my tiny worm bin, but then I come in here and it just kind of <laughs> resets my eyes for what a worm bin full of worms looks like. 
just really, really spectacular bin here. All right, so, <laughs> sorry, I get excited when I see this many worms. They are just all over the place. All right, let's, let's, uh, <laughs> I could do this all day, but let's start setting up the feeding zone. And I don't see any of last time's feeding, you know, other than those banana stems. I don't see that mango peel, unless that little peel that we had was it. Um, it's probably in here somewhere. I just, you know, can't find it. But they're doing a fantastic job of getting rid of food. So we're going to give them a little bit more than we did last time. At this point, you know, at the beginning, I kind of dictate to the bin how much food they're getting, that kind of thing. But as the bin matures, you kind of let it dictate to you where it's going, how much to feed it, how close you are to castings. And that's where we're at right now. The moisture level is really, really good. It's not overly moist and it's not dry. So the food is providing all the moisture it needs. Now, as it gets closer to finished casting, it retains more moisture. So you just got to kind of look out for that. So let's add some bedding. We, we don't need to add too much. I think this will be enough. And then we can jump right into the feeding. This is what I had in mind. We'll see how we do with it. Some greens, a little bit of strawberries, some banana peels, and a lettuce head. We'll jump right in, that in. This is also some zucchini that went bad on us. So we'll put that in. It I tried to freeze it. It only been in the freezer for about three or four hours. So it may not break down as quick as a typical frozen zucchini would, but a little tomato. Grape, strawberry, little banana peels. But I think this is this will be a pretty good feeding for them. And then we'll do our coffee, which provides even more food, and just kind of make sure the clumps are broken up. It gets a little moldy while it's sitting here waiting to be fed to the worms or used in my regular compost, but that's okay. The worms will get to it. And then this is pulverized eggshells that we use for grit for the worms, for their gizzards. And then we just cover it up. There's so many worms in here. I just <laughs> definitely freezing all my food. If you haven't seen my other videos, feel free to subscribe. I've got some playlists and they're one for each of my bins. And this is one of them. And I've done some experiments in here with frozen food and same thing with my outside bin. That is where to go to look at everything that's been done to these bins. And you can see them from start to finish castings. Here's that grape stem and I'm gonna break it up. I meant to bring scissors. Someone suggested breaking it up, get the surface area higher, which is a fantastic tip. And please comment below, leave me tips. Tell me what you've done with your bins. Let me know how your bins are doing. I'm very excited to hear about everybody's do it. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.